everyone, Philip Duncan with your spring and October climate watch update brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz and our official IBM business partnership. Let's take a look at the animated wind map for the 1st of October showing air pressure, low air pressure in the dark shading, higher pressure in the brighter shading. So we're still in that classic spring setup where high pressure to the north, low pressure to the south, and of course the windy westerlies are the halfway mark between those air pressure systems. So windy weather kicking off October, no surprises there. October can be one of the stormiest months of the year. So don't be surprised if there are plenty of wind warnings and reminders that uh, winter's only just finished. You know, I like to say that winter ends with a blast and that blast is spring. So a lot of people, you know, it's so much for spring when you get a cold change, that's what spring's all about. It is about winter fading away and hints of summer gradually coming in. And we are seeing more of those hints of summer. And in fact, this airflow coming out of Australia is going to help lift temperatures up for a time. And that will happen again next week as we go into the first week of October. So let's kick off with El Nino. We announced the other week, this is officially here now. And if you look at the computer modeling, El Nino continues to grow and strengthen right up until January 2024. So it is likely to be at its peak when we are in the peak of summer. So those two combine, that's one of the reasons why you keep hearing parts of New Zealand will be hot and dry. Not in spring so much. Spring, well, I'll tell you in a moment about spring, but let's just focus on the long range. So it goes down a little bit as we go into February, March next year. But basically, it looks as though El Nino is with us right through until about winter next year. It may even go into winter next year, but that's a little too far out to be locking it in. When you take a look at all the different models from different countries, I've cut them off on which ones they are, but I just wanted to show you October, December, February, and all of these gray boxes going into this pink uh, El Nino side. So they're all leaning strongly towards El Nino, and December is when they're all pretty much at their peak. As you notice in February, or you may not be able to notice it because it's a pretty fine line, but by February, they start to just drop back a little bit, but still very much in El Nino. So it may be at the moment still spring-like, getting some wet weather, but further into summer, further into autumn, that's when things could get a lot drier for us. But I don't want to be too doom and gloom because New Zealand does have some silver linings and wild cards as far as rain is concerned. And we'll talk about that when we get up to the rain maps. But looking at a, a, the average of international models, the model of all models, and this shows, and this is from the Bureau of Meteorology out of Australia, showing El Nino here for October, strengths, strengthens further into December, and even here in February, very little difference between December and February. So we are pretty much in the same place, going right through summer and kicking off autumn. And also we've got the Indian Ocean Dipole. For those who don't know, that is like the Indian Ocean's version of El Nino and La Nina. So Australia, which is impacted by El Nino on the Pacific side, also has a positive uh, IOD. And that basically means you've got dry conditions on the western side of Australia. So if you're in Australia, dry weather moves off to the Indian Ocean towards Africa on that side and heads off towards uh, the Americas on the eastern side. So it moves away from Australia on both angles. Let's get into the marine heat wave. We've got some good news finally. First time this year I have seen green all around New Zealand. So that's a good change. We have been in a marine heat wave for the last couple of years. So getting some changes in that, that is a good sign. And also links in with El Nino. El Nino normally cools down our uh, sea surface temperatures. Still a bit warm along the eastern side of the country, a little more sheltered from those westerly winds that are blowing through at the moment. Um, obviously still a little bit mild down here. We're also getting some airflows out of Australia, which will be helping some of those currents on the sea surface move around. But it's good to see a lot of green showing up there. Now, when we take a look at the global image, this is thanks to the Bureau of Meteorology, this is where we measure El Nino. So that big red blob, that is El Nino, classic setup. What is not so classic is the fact that it's still much warmer than average over here in the uh, equatorial Pacific, and also much warmer than average along that eastern side of Australia, right down to, Tas down to Tasmania. And of course, that's where a lot of our weather systems form. So we've got a low pressure zone in the first week of October. It's gonna be sitting around uh, Tasmania and Victoria with that warmer than average sea surface temperatures that could just help give it 
a little bit more energy and produce a little bit more rain. But it is good to see a lot more closer to average now in the New Zealand area. So let's take a look now at the air pressure systems that are coming through for the month of October. This is a good way of generally working out dry, wet, and which way our wind is coming from. So when you've got high pressure to the north and low pressure to the south, the filling, the middle part here, windy westerlies. We kick off here, obviously, on Sunday, we've got a big blast of weather moving around. That will be moving away as that high moves in, but a southerly change for New Zealand to kick off October, but it's still very much westerly driven as we go through that first week. As we go into the second week, no great deal of change, except the high pressure zones are dropping a little further south. That's what we get as we head further into summer. So we're going to be seeing those high pressure zones coming down a little more. And in between them, that's where you get the southerly or on the other side, the hot northerly. And that's why we get those temperature, uh, temperature fluctuations. But good to see the lows sort of drop down here for a little bit of time. That does give us a chance to dry out further for western areas, which do want it. The downside is eastern areas start to miss out on the rain and obviously you know we've just had some rain which is good news but the eastern side of the north island went from floods and mud to dry and dusty very quickly in the last month or so so that rain that we just had at the end of september was very good it's going to be fairly dry in the weeks ahead but i have to point out these southerlies so in each map there's been a southerly for new zealand southerlies bring in rain to the eastern side of the country that's one positive for eastern New Zealand. So each time you get a southerly, like this one you see here, that punches in a few showers. So that works against the dry El Nino. But basically El Nino in spring is like wearing a hat on a hat. Spring is windy westerlies, and guess what? El Nino is windy westerlies. So it just puts a hat on a hat. The problem is in summer, when you, when you have that summer heat and these summer high pressure zones, and then you throw in there a bit of El Nino spring-like weather, and suddenly you've got a lot more hot weather appearing in eastern areas. That heat coming out of Australia is the main concern for New Zealand, and actually eastern Australia, with an El, El Nino summer. There we go, got it out. All right, soil moisture-wise, still a little bit wet in the east. That rain that just fell in the last week or so has really helped these dry eastern areas. And similar story down in Canterbury, you had some very big downpours in the last day or so inland with a few thunderstorms. So unusual to see blue down here at this time of the year. It's likely to be a little bit wetter than average in the months ahead in that southwestern corner. And eastern areas, you are likely to dry out. That map, courtesy of the National Institute of water and atmospheric research. Now this map's a little different, we don't normally show it. I just wanted to pick this up. This is water on the top two meters of the surface. And what it shows is uh, drying out along the eastern side of New Zealand and also South Waikato, inland parts of Bay of Plenty, not necessarily talked about a lot, to Puki over to Tokoroa, those areas in there are drying out at the moment. Just wanted to share that with you. It's a little bit of a different map. You can find that at ruralweather.co.nz. Let's get into the rain for the next two weeks ahead. Big picture, then we'll zoom into New Zealand. But as you can see here, we've got some rain coming in the southeastern corner of Australia. That's going to be very welcome. Over on the New Zealand side, we do get some of that wet weather, mostly enhanced by the mountains and ranges. Now, the other feature I wanted to show you is this blue-green zone here. That's the bottom of the scale, five to 10 millimeters over two weeks. That's a dry zone due to high pressure. Up here, that blue, that's over 300 millimeters of rain. That's the tropical convergent zone. That's a long way north of us at the moment. That's the potential for some silver linings this summer. With warmer than average sea surface conditions here and to the north, you could get a low that comes down and brings New Zealand some rain. So that's always a, a positive feature to keep an eye on. Closer to New Zealand here, or closer up version, Classic spring setup. Most of the rain's on the west coast, same for the North Island. Places like uh, Waitomo and King Country getting 80 to 100 millimetres potentially over the next couple of weeks. But the eastern side and places like Marlborough, much drier and also drier up here in the far north. But again, the southwestern corner of both islands in spring and in an El Nino spring, you get more wet weather and Plenty of cloudy weather as well. You know, Auckland this summer may not be that flash. Cloudy weather off the Tasman Sea. You need to be over 
the other side of the hills and ranges if you want sunnier weather going through to this uh, over the summer months ahead. So long range October, here we are with the IBM long range information. Australia leaning drier than average, but there is this white line along the edge here where some places could be a little bit wetter than usual or about average. On the New Zealand side, it's what we've been seeing. Rain around the South Island and those southerlies coming in, bringing a little bit of wet weather to places in the south and the east where you may not normally expect it in spring. We move to November, no real change in Australia, just a few thunderstorms, looks like uh, that's what you're seeing there. And in New Zealand, plenty of rain for Fiordland and some spill over elsewhere. The shading you see around the North Island actually indicates still some rain coming in. Uh, it is not as red as it could be. In fact, you, know, you see up here at the top of Queensland, that is very dry. We're not really seeing that red shading in New Zealand, but if it is appearing, it's a little more out to the east and maybe a little bit to the eastern side of the top of the country. And finally, temperatures. Being like this all year, what it means is the yellow is about half a degree to one degree above average. And over here in Australia, half a degree to about two degrees above average. So it is uh, the reason why we're talking about this hotter weather coming through. But again, if you live in the western side of New Zealand or if you live in the southern part, don't expect it to be overly warm over the weeks and months ahead. Anything warmer than average may actually be more at nighttime rather than daytime. So you may still have your heat pumps on, you may still have to throw a, a sweater on top uh, because it may not necessarily be overly warm. It's spring and that's what spring is all about. So that is all from me as we go into October. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for all the support we get on YouTube. We really do appreciate the comments. And we will be back again in one month as we take a closer look at what El Nino is going to do going into summer and trying to find the silver linings. It's exhausting hearing people talking about hot and dry, hot and dry. You know, it's not, it's not the case for everybody. So we'll try and break it down for you. Take a bit of a breath and uh, you'll jo and join us again in one month's time. Thanks very much for joining us today, though. Have a great October.